folks, it's me, your producer, Diana, here to give you a few housekeeping things before we get into it. So this is a re-recording again, because this is another session for which we don't have the audio. This is actually the second half of our very first session, which is why it cuts in in a weird place and the last episode cut out in a weird place, because it is one session split in half. We're going to work on having more natural places to cut and also on having little intros and outros for you, but I just wanted to thank you for hanging in there with us through the re-records and through the occasional awkward cut-ins, cut-outs. So yeah, with that, I am going to uh, let the episode play, and thanks for stopping by. Last time on Masks and Martyrs. Recently, you have all found yourselves coming to the city of Hintilla, the jewel of the Empire. However, last night, each of you were arrested. Okay, so, I can probably get this out of here. Quick! Your door, Brika, is currently open. I'm going to get to work trying to break out my fellow prisoners. Uh, it clicks and swings open. Reagan walks out and kind of pokes her head around that corner. Uh, you see there are no people, other than a single woman sitting at a table. So, what are we playing? A very dangerous game. We're playing! Get the fuck out of here! I don't know if any of you know, but my name is Anastasia Minata, and I have need of a few choice individuals who have the skills to take care of a task for me. What I'm asking you to do is break into the residence of the Grand Duke Erwin von Templin. I would recommend that you don't try any clever decisions. We now return to this heist already in progress, where our intrepid heroes were attempting to retrieve some of Montague Pensmith, local twink wizard's money, from a painting which is being guarded by some guards on our way to the heist, which we were hired, some would say blackmailed, into doing. Get you what? My money. What money? Please move. Are you like an art dealer or something? Yes, I am a little bit, like... Wait, wait, wait. We were told to stand in front of this painting and make sure no one did anything funny. Now you're walking up... Monty's smile is just getting tighter and tighter. <laughs> and, and you just said, please move so I can get my money. Uh huh. But wouldn't you like to have some of my money? It's quite a lot of money. See, at this point, it sounds to me like you have money here, and you're asking us to just move out of the way? Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to just give us five gold each, it makes me think you have more than five gold, meaning what's to make me not just tell you to skedaddle and find it myself? Uh... Reagan turns to Monty. You really don't talk to mercs much, do you? No, I don't. Uh, M Monty's gonna try and intimidate them by putting on a bit of a, um, like a light show with pulling out his book and it starts to float next to him and he starts to ready what looks like, um, a firebolt in his, in his free hand. And he's like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't want to get fried today and you'd like to walk away with five gold each. Uh, roll, roll an intimidation check for me. They, they are like, like as soon as you, as you do this, they, their hands just go to their swords. Hey, that is a modified 20. 17 plus three. Let's see how they do. Oh, I am so sorry. Oh no. His eyes narrow, and he says, uh, ain't killed me a wizard in a while. Uh, Especially not a rich one. Okay. We're gonna play this? We're gonna do this? They, they are tense. They're, they are ready to go, but, um, well, they, they seem like they, they don't seem like they want to make the first move. You want me to sweeten the pot? I'll sweeten the pot! What's it gonna take me to make you guys leave quietly? Tell you what. Uh, you walk away now, and I don't call the rest of my boys over. You know, the other 16 that I mentioned. That seems like a good offer. <laughs> Wizard types like you, you don't like burning books. 
Seems to me like we're in a place full of books. Funny that. He has a point. You're not helping. Tell you what, I'm willing to let you just walk away right now. Hell, I won't even look for this money you've been hiding. Doubt that. You calling me a liar? I'm saying I doubt I doubt it. <laughs> I'm saying you might look for it. You might not find it, but you'll probably look for it. Like, Monty's starting to kind of laugh like he's kind of nervous now. <laughs> How about you fuck off? And you can go back there whenever it is that we're done watching it. Which, from what I understand, could be sooner, could be later. I'm not really at liberty to say, you know? Need to know basis. I have a question. Hmm? While Monty is squaring off against the angry guard, would it be possible for Brika to stealth her way past all the guards into the painting? God, please. Roll... Uh, roll, 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 a, roll a stealth check. It, it would be very difficult because they are... Uh, there are four of them, and they're all sort of arrayed so that they can cover the different sight lines, but currently they are intensely focused on Regan and Monty, so uh, it's it's possible. It's just going to be a, a high check, though. Hey, Regan's just making friends. There's some weird-ass so friends. So that would be 28. Brika, you uh, you see this happening <laughs> because, because of your high insight, you're able to pick out the first moment of tension. You see it coming. You see it beginning to swell like a wave about to crash. And as soon as they all go for their swords to hold them and they begin to tense, that's when you move. Coming from one of their blind spots, as he turns, you use your small height to your advantage and you just kind of slide past him. Uh, currently, none of them are facing you. However, you are in the middle of a semicircle of four large sword-wielding men. It's you and the painting. Uh, none of them have noticed you yet because you are very small. You're being very quiet. And they are all focused on the display of magic in front of them. Mm-hmm. Do we see her <laughs> since we're facing her? <laughs> uh, you sort of blink for a minute and you're like, wait, is that? Holy shit. Wait, wait, wait. Brika? It's sort of one of, like, one of those moments of just like, oh, shit. Mm-mm. Right, right, yeah. Uh, so Reagan, she's going to kind of like put her hands up for both sides, trying to placate them. Like, listen, I was going to say I think we got off on the wrong foot, but I think we, and she kind of points to her, the mercs and then points to herself, I think we have something. I think we're good. We're good, right? Anyway, this guy, I've only known him for like 30 minutes, and he's usually pretty chill. And also, um, we're working for the same person you are. What? Yeah, we work for Lady Monada. You have any uh, proof of that? No, I mean, she didn't give me I mean- any. I have my own signet ring. I'm like... Hey, look, I'm married too. I have a ring, but for... <laughs> oh, that's nice. Congratulations. Ah, well, you know, he makes me happy. Aw. Well, that's good. G- good for you, man. Thanks. Legitimate human connection. Oh, wait, we're, we're tense. Got it. Angry. <laughs> uh, how's, how's Brinka doing? <laughs> uh, Brinka, what are you doing back there? Investigating this painting to figure out how you hide the things in or behind it. Roll an investigation check for me. And while she's doing that, Reagan's gonna keep trying to make small talk with these guys. So tell me about your husband. What's well, like? Like how'd you meet? Oh like, uh, well, same as same as most folks. You know, had a drink one night, got to talking. I rolled a fifteen. Uh, it takes you a minute. But you are able to see a uh, uh, so, sort of a small groove under this little latch, and uh, you feel like if you pull it, perhaps, perhaps you can move the painting slightly. All right, I guess I will try to move the painting. Is it going to be a loud process? Uh, roll side of hand for me. You got kids. <laughs> uh no no not yet i mean he wants us to but oh, you know oh hey i mean that's cool hey yeah, kid, kids are cool may i recommend a dog first i think i'm fine oh uh yeah we're uh we're still angry book still floating uh fireball has been dispersed but <laughs> yeah, yeah well you know you're still you're like you still have your hand like on your gun <laughs> and it's like yeah that's cool that's what you know you should get a dog <laughs> <He's> puppies <laughs> I got a 26. Yes! Okay, yeah, you, without a sound, you uh, you just slide it up and you see under there, uh, how much is in there? 
this one has 135 gold pieces. Cool. So in uh, so just you know in normal D and D money that's about thirty that's about thirteen thousand five hundred. That's uh, that's a lot of money to hide behind a painting. I mean, is it like in a sack? <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's it's, it's 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 in like it's in like a small. Um, in fact, as you pick it up, you probably think it's just silver, but then as you open up your eyes, it's just kind of wide and like holy shit. Okay, either way, Breek is taking it and just you know like casually leaving the semicircle. I assume. Uh, roll a stealth for me again, with advantage this time, because they seem to be a bit more at ease with the conversation, or at least, like, the leader is. Yeah, they are. I'm fucking delightful. Whatever you fucking say. That's a 28. You're the one who fucking egged them on, Montague. <laughs> yeah. I do, I do, I do want to point out, like, like Reagan was just, like, she has been nothing but trying friendly. to de-escalate the situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then Monty was just, like, escalating. Which is, it's it's funny. Like, plus three charisma, plus one charisma. Yeah. Sort of soft there. I like it. I, I, I like it. It's fun. Whatever. Anyway. Um, yes. Uh, but, uh, okay, so you got a 28, 28, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, once more, you just dart away. Um... Uh, and as you as you turn the corner, you see Namina standing there, and he goes, "Did you uh, did you get it?" What do you think? Well, seeing as I didn't see you leave, oh, I assume so. Hey, Riggin, uh, you know she decides it's time to wrap up the conversation because I mean, you know, she's M- yeah. She's Monty, done. Monty puts his book back on his back. Look, you guys are obviously good at your jobs. I will pass it on to the boss. This was actually a secret shop kind of situation. I know you <laughs> oh, don't have any reason to believe I work for her, but I mean, would I lie to you guys? Probably. Shut the hell up, Monty. You don't know me. <laughs> Can you give me a deception check on that one? Because that's a that's a bit of a it's a bit of a tall order to be like <laughs> I was sent to I was sent to <laughs> to convince you of this. I'm like a I was shopper. I'm just monitoring your performance, you know. Yeah, I got it. And I if you don't let me that. speak to your manager, eighteen. Oh yeah. So we good? Well, you got a natural one, so uh. <laughs> he, says, he says uh, uh he says, uh, you know, if 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 you know her, I'd I'd, I'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know, putting a good word. Yeah, yeah. Look, like, you're doing a good job here. I'll let you guys get back to your evening. Um, also, please don't get mad, but I can't leave the premises because I live here. You live in a library? So Blurred. just saying, if you see me around, please don't shoot, like, attack me. I'll leave you alone, but I live here. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, that aside, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, you find people, you guys have a good night. Tell your husband, Reagan says, hey, you'll know who it is. Vaguely threatening. Only to oh. you, Monty. She's very friendly. Okay, uh, sure. Hey, hey, so, some buff broad said she knew who you were. <laughs> no, 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 no. She said he knew who she was. Oh. Uh, you, you all, you all, you all walk away and between the stacks... You meet up with Prika and Nimian. And uh, Reagan is going to immediately turn to Monty, and she says, Okay, listen. listen. I'm so sorry. Yeah, next time you want to intimidate someone, maybe try looking like me first, or just, you know... I, I thought I did what? really well. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want to tell yourself. D- different people are intimidated by different things. Fine, whatever. Um, Bri- you got it. Brika, you got it? Oh! Yes. And she tosses you your purse of cash. Thank you so much. Okay, so I said I was going to pay you, and um, he kind of looks at Nimian and kind of gestures like... Uh. He did the distraction! Okay, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. Um, <laughs> so Mo- Monty reaches into his magic bag of cash and pulls out five gold pieces each. Hey. Wonderful. Thanks, money bags. You're welcome. Um, there are two other hiding places. I mean, I don't think I've got enough charm in me to get all of them, so... I, I don't think we'll need the rest of it tonight, frankly. I mean, I also I have a feeling after we finish the job, they're probably going to clear out. I'm pretty sure they're here to protect us. Okay. And keep you from getting your money, maybe. For some reason. I mean, so you, you can't leave the city? Yeah, so you can't skip down. She seems pretty adamant that you don't. What was that about? Um, actually, I don't know. I mean, I... Um, l- like I said, 
I've walked among nobles, but I don't know the families in this town very well. Huh. So we're supposed to find a pathway in this library, right? Like, in here somewhere? Hmm. Um, hey, Andrew, do I have any suspicions about where that might be, or do I need to start go start finding my friends? Uh, friend singular. Uh, you, you remember- <laughs> Excuse you, I think you have at least two friends. <laughs> I don't, I don't think That's I That's what I get for that. <laughs> um, uh, you, you remember her walking sort of towards the back? You would guess if anyone would know, it would probably be like, uh, like someone who spends a lot of time in the library, somebody else. Okay. Let's go talk to Bertrand. What's a Bertrand? He points to the mustache guy sitting there. That one. What, you guys got beef? No, no, I mean, he's fine. He's fine, I guess. And they go over. It doesn't sound fine, but okay. Ugh. Bertrand! <laughs> oh, Master Pentecost. Good to see you. How are you today? I didn't see you last night. I, I, I had a very interesting book on the malting patterns of certain breeds of dragons. Fascinating stuff. Thought you would really get a kick out of it. Oh, yeah, hilarious. <laughs> and Monty fixes the other three with his look of, like, why don't I like Bertrand, do you ask? But what can I do for you today? Bertrand, you've been at this library a long time, haven't you? Oh, yes. Yes. Long time. <laughs> if... I were to want to find a secret passage, where would I find that? Which secret passage? Um, I heard a rumor that the Von Tepler Manor is connected to the library. Most of the passages in the bones of the city are all buried now. Okay, um, Bertrand, where is Lynn? Do you know? Oh, Lynn, lovely girl. God, I feel like I'm talking to my follow father. Follow me, follow me. I'll, sh I'll show you where. He sort of just like achingly stands up and his phones like, like are just like creaking together. Like, just like my father. Stone on stone. Uh, he, gets, he, he gets a small walking stick being a gnome and he's, it's like maybe two feet tall and he starts, just starts hobbling forward. And you can see just how, old, just how hunched over he is. He has some hair growing out of his ears. He's so old. And, and he just goes... Right this way. And just click, 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 click. After like 10 minutes, just like tapping out. Yeah, work. Regan was going to actually lean over and be like, uh, you, you need a lift, man? Nope. Nope. Important, right. to, ma important right. to maintain your independence. Sure. Yeah, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Monty leans back to Regan and goes, it never works. You can't do anything to help him unless you re help him reach a book off a high shelf. You can lift? Uh, after <laughs> after around like after around like 10 minutes of walking uh, you come to a nondescript section of the wall in the northeast corner of the library well there it is the the old passage yes okay then my other question that I don't think you remembered Bertrand is do you know where Lynn is he's doing his best okay <laughs> Lynn's, Lynn is probably um, in her home right now. As you know, her father doesn't like her to be out too late. He, he thinks it's bad form. I, I told her, I, I said, scholarly pursuits are nothing to scoff at. She believes, uh, she well, he believes that she's, she's of marrying age and should begin seeking out a partner. I, I myself have never been married, and I found myself <laughs> very happy to okay. wire away my... Um, Bert Bertrand, do you know how to open this? Oh, yes. Uh, he reaches over with his stick and just kind of pushes in one of the stones. Uh, as you, as you, the whole stone doesn't go in, there's a small circle around the sides of the stick, and it sort of clicks in. And uh, he kind of jostles it about, and then there is another click, and this wall noiselessly just sort of slides open, and he says, Yes. The trick is, you have to know where it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That'll do it. Okay. Um, well, uh, Bertrand, thank you. Um, of course, of course, Master Pensmith. Please do actually set aside the book on dragon molting. I'll, I'll actually read that, I'm sure, later. Um, but first, I have to go into this dark hole. Hey. <laughs> Of course, of course. Mr. Master Pentagu, please be careful. Dangerous types around, large men wandering around the library. So, 
some of them are holding weapons like, well, uh, like your companions here, I suppose. Regan looks like, looks from Bertrand to Monty, confusion on her face, and she says, your name's Montague Pentague? <laughs> Forgive him, he's very old. I can see that. Bertrand, uh, can you possibly shut this behind us and uh, possibly don't tell the scary men that you saw us? Well, if they ask, I will. Um, what, what should I tell them? I could concoct a story of... Uh, tell them dead. I got arrested again. I... Oh, you were arrested. Yes, last night. They burst in and decided to take me for resisting arrest. Well... That's unfortunate. Yes, it was. That's how they get you. Yes, it is. That's how they got me. <laughs> <laughs> now he's oh, no. in a library prison. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> uh, well, uh, thanks, Bert. And Reagan gives him, like, a, a friendly pat on the shoulder. And his uh, shoulder good. breaks off. Uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> He just you. dies. He's oh, dead. No. <laughs> I don't know my own strength. Anyway, good good meeting you. Thank you, sir. And I will be back for that book. Hopefully by tomorrow morning. Excellent. Sounds like a good time. I'm going to go back <laughs> to my table. Okay. Good luck with that, sir. And into the hole we go. Does, he actually, like, does he actually shut the gate behind us like I asked? He, he does. He's he, he's a bit daft, but he's just not. He's not that daft, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, there. So uh, there is a click behind you as the door slides closed, uh, otherwise silently. As it does, you see along the way there are these small crystals, just one by one, light up with a a dim green light as you go, leading further down, maybe forty feet down uh, a, a, along this path, uh, and then forward. Regan's gonna turn to Brika and say, "So you're like a like a stealthy roguey type, right?" Sure. So like, does this look good to you? Uh... Regan is not herself a traps person, but I figure, as you know, someone who has been in the field long enough as a soldier and a merc, she would think to get somebody to check. <laughs> yeah, people don't trap libraries too often, so Monty's not even thinking about it. Maybe not libraries, but passages that lead from libraries to their house. Well, she got a one. So. <laughs> uh, you get the impression that there aren't traps, but like, isn't it all just a matter of opinion, really? <laughs> traps, no traps. Who's no, to can, say? Can, can, can't we all just get along in this crazy yeah. world? It looks good to you, looks good to me. And, Ra- I mean, Reagan, she trusts Brika. She busted her out of jail. They went through things. Yeah, yeah. My Monty's good with Brika, too. He's just a little bit wary about Reagan, but she seems... Okay. She's fine. She She's scary. I mean, yeah, but... Nimian, Nimian clatters along behind you. Oh, I forgot you were here. Sorry, uh, we said we were going to get you booze and I only gave you gold. I'm fine. I'm fine. You still good? Does anyone have, like, a healing anything? Like, a spell? I don't, I don't know how you magician types work. No, I mostly specialize in blowing shit up. I can kind of relate to that, actually. And I'm, and I'm mostly specialize in getting the shit kicked out of me, so... Yeah, that's so why I was looking for, like, a healing something for you, you or... poor thing. Um, what is your relation to Anastasia, or whatever her name is? She seems to know you. You know, it's a good story. It's funny, really. Someday maybe I'll tell you. Okay. Secrets are secrets. Everybody has them, so don't worry about it. I... I just thought I'd ask. Okay! Onward! Into the dark hole! I mean, I mean to, to be fair, thus far, Monty's interactions with, with Nimian have been be quiet, leave him, I won't pay him. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been yeah, like, yeah, no, 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 no. It's Pleasant. totally fair. It's totally, totally 100% fair. <laughs> um, so you guys have been uh, walking for a little while now. Uh, you've encountered uh, no traps because as you sort of gleaned as you go further in, it seems... As though uh, any frequently used secret passage that a noble would take would probably not have traps because they'd always be like walking, watching for them. Oh, yes, that would be inconvenient. Yeah. However, uh, after maybe like an hour of walking, it's a, it's it, it's a while. Honestly, uh, you see the tunnel comes to an end. You see ahead of you is a wall, 
and there is a handle on one side cut into the stone itself. Okay. Guess I'm gonna open the handle. You pull it, and as you do, you see uh, you are in the sewers underground. Ew. Uh, Reagan takes a deep breath through the nose. Just take in that man smell. <laughs> uh, ahead of you, there is a middle channel of the actual sewage. There are two sort mm. of raised walkways on either side of it. Uh, and you you uh, you see a, across it, there is a, like a small walkway that looks to be in in, a, in pretty good repair leading to the other side of the tunnel. Well, we go over there, I guess. Monty's just recklessly leading the way. Uh, roll an investigation check for me. Everybody? Uh, yeah, everybody can roll this. Why not? Ten! Uh, modified 19. I got a four. <laughs> Well, oh dear. Uh, I got a frog. Monty, uh, <laughs> after examining for a small amount of time in sort of the, the dim, uh, sort of the dim light coming from the sconce, you see that there is, uh, very faintly, a small symbol there, which from what you know from your studies, uh, seems to be the Von Tepler family crest. It's like a, uh, like, sort of like a, like a, like an eagle, sort of, uh, like looking back over it, so like the profile of an eagle. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, uh, which is the which which you know they, this is the place you're trying to get into. Okay. They didn't just they don't just they don't just like throw up decals, <laughs> walk, like, <laughs> just like just like gang signs. Like here we are. <laughs> yeah, no, they're just um, been tagging down here. <laughs> yeah, just just making sure. Um, what uh, find crest and it's um, it's the von Tepler symbol. Does does it look like a button or just like a plain engraving? Uh, the more you look at it, the more you know that it's meant to be pressed. Uh, Monty pushes the button. Okay. Uh, once more, the soundless sliding of stone and oh look, another pathway. This time, it leads forward maybe up ten feet, and you look up, and there's another door there. Good working, boss. I'm thinking now we should be quieter because that looks like the house. Ray, got an eight for being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Clomp, clomp. <laughs> let's see how, uh, let's see how, uh, Flatfoot does. The good news is, uh, Flatfoot got a two, so at least hey! you're stealthier than him. Hey, take that, Flatfoot. Uh, I got a 13. Uh, Brika? Uh, 15 plus... Eleven. <laughs> Holy shit! Brika just vanishes. And Brika's gone. Uh, Brika is just like, uh, I'll go first. <laughs> she fades into the shadows, yes. Uh, Brika, you walk up, uh, you know, you know, like you're, you know, you, it's the, you don't want to be seen with them exactly after how much noise they're making, I think. Uh, I mean, but, also, uh, we're just a motley crew who wants to see, who would want to be seen with us, yeah. really. Uh, so, Brika, you walk up, and uh, as, as you approach, you see there's a wooden door, and you can see under the lip of it, there is what looks to be flickering torchlight. Uh, you can't see the torches themselves. Just through the crack at the bottom of the door, you can see some light coming through. So, what do you do, Brika Chan? Hmm. I keep expecting you to say Brika Chan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. No, 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 no. It, it's it's Brika Chan. It's Brika Senpai. Cha. Brika Cha. You will call me Brika Sama. <laughs> you peons. No. <laughs> Brika Sama. Brika Sama. <laughs> oh my God. Sasuga. Brika Sama. <laughs> Anyway. Guys, I can't speak Japanese. I'm I'm literally just saying Brika-sama. I'm just saying Brika-sama in funny voices. Brika-cha will motion over her traveling companions. Clomp, 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 clomp. (laughs) Not too close. Oh, by the way, are we all dirt? Are we dirty at all from the sewer? No, you uh, you went over the sewage channel in the tunnel. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, my I'll say this. I'll say this. You can you can choose whether or not you want <laughs> no. to have gone through the sewage. No, please. No, digitation. No. Press the digitation. I am just kidding. <laughs> However, I did think of a great portmanteau, like a stealth mission. While you're smelly, would be a smelf mission. I hate you. I, you are wow. welcome. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm, I'm gonna. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how do you? How, we're moving on. How do you Thank proceed? You. So, Brika moves quietly. Yes, Brika moves quietly. 
Monty mostly moves quietly. Clomp! <laughs> well, uh, well, Brita, you're, you're, you're currently at a, like, you're currently at the door. Can I, uh, investigate any further with my limited view under the door? Uh, roll an investigation check for me. So, 14. Okay. So, there don't seem to be any footsteps in there. Uh, there mm-hmm. are no, there are no sounds of people. Just the slow, low crackle of torches. Just, uh, kind of burning low in an otherwise silent area. Okay, um... I'm gonna gonna say to my friends here, there doesn't seem to be anyone on the other side of the door. Great! Oh my god, Lord. <laughs> Reagan, would you like to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, when I roll a seven on stealth, I fucking commit to my roll. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, let's just let her burst through there. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming she doesn't get to roll stealthy again. Like, I assume we're sticking with the seven, eight. Reagan's Reg- Reg- going first. That's the voice of a guy who's about to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh... Yeah, you can roll. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, 17. With your disadvantage? Oh, oh, disadvantage. Well, you, you mean, you, you do realize that, that heavy armor confers disadvantage on stealth. No, definitely forgot that. No, oh, it's a two! <laughs> oh. Aw, she's oh. ugly! <laughs> oh. Hey. She has cheekbones for days. <laughs> so. Oh, she's loud. <laughs> so, uh, you open the door, stepping forward, and as you do, there is a flare of magical energy around, uh, of ahead of you, around two stone figures, tusked mouths gaping in this horrific grin, stone wings arching from their backs, and they are crouched forward, massive shoulder muscles, stone, almost as they loom forward uh, on their knuckles. As you step forward, there's the flare of magical energy and their eyes open. Oh no. Glowing red. These Anna. are gargoyles, and I would Anna. like everyone to roll initiative. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Well, hey there, friends. Thank you so much for coming to this week's episode of Masks and Martyrs. This is your producer, Diana, and I had some housekeeping and plugs to take care of. So first of all, if you're enjoying our show, we would love if you could leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening and subscribe to the podcast. We'll be updating every other Wednesday, and we are doing everything based on word of mouth right now. So your listening and potentially sharing it with a friend, hint, hint, goes a long way. We really appreciate you being here and discovering this world along with us, and we really hope you're enjoying it. If you want to talk to us about it, you can follow us on Twitter at Masks and Martyrs or tweet using the hashtag Masks and Martyrs. We love hearing from you. Seriously, I, I get really excited. I like talking to people. I like making new friends, so come be my friend. Uh, hey, if you like this podcast, you're probably going to be interested in all of the other cool stuff on the brand new Nerdification Media Network. All of our shows are available now on our website, nerdification.media, including our newest partners like Generation Fangirl, who I talked about last episode, and we have a new actual play podcast, Dwarf Stars and Dreadnoughts, a sci-fi 5th edition game, which you will probably love if you love Masks and Martyrs. In addition to that, we have three new gaming channels to the network. Uh, We have Sarah Reese's Hormone Replacement Gaming, uh, which is run by my good friend Amy. And she is a trans woman gamer and she is, you know, striving to make a more inclusive space in the gaming community. Uh, We also have Watashi Machine, which is my good friends Kemi and Sid. And they do a lot of Twitch streaming and stuff. They're really fun and I think you will enjoy their channel. Last but not least, we have So Link Smash, which is more of a potpourri channel. Uh, He talks a lot about gaming. He streams the Nintendo Directs, does reaction videos and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, Max is... Uh, just a, a great friend of mine, and I really think you'll enjoy his content. So, uh, yeah, last but not least, on to our music credits. Our intro music is, well, this week I used Dreamlike for the last time on Hintilla, and that is a Kevin McLeod track. Uh, the intro music after that was Threads of Fate by Diana Paparozzi, who is me. And our ending theme is Mary Meet Meg by Hopper and the Books on Tape. And you can find all of the links to those fabulous folks in the description. And uh, with that, I'm going to let you all get back into the episode. Thank you so much for stopping by. I finally get to attack a bunch. This is this this is Reagan's like whole thing, is this? Fuck yeah, it is. 15. Kicking ass and apparently 
being very jovial and friendly to people. Who'd have thought? <laughs> That's a four! Uh... <laughs> uh, I got ten. Okay. Uh, Nimian did well. He got a twenty. Hey, good job, Nimian. We're proud of you. Gargo the Greater got higher. Uh, okay, uh, so immediately spring forward. You have enough time to... Uh, you immediately sense danger, and you manage to pull out your shield and your sword. However, as you do, the creature is already upon you. Ah, son of a bitch. Leaping forward, its wings... Vroom, vroom, one, two, great. Um, I don't I don't know... But like, 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 great, like, like, whatever, whatever wings, whatever the verb for wings is. It's, uh, flaps. Uh, yeah, flaps. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Yay! Yes. And just, and just, whoosh, whoosh, bounds forward. This tide of living stone, as it leaps up and swings a mighty fist at you. Reagan says, "This is badass." <laughs> okay, he rolls uh, an eighteen versus AC. Ha! <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> right, because you have fucking dope AC. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Reagan just puts her shield up, lets him bounce off of it. Oh, okay, so he swings his claws, and they just shing sheer off your shield, and he goes to bite you, which, uh, three is not enough. Uh, <laughs> he goes to chomp down, and you just duck out of the way. Cool. Uh, at this point, um... Actually, I, I have something to do. Uh, uh, yeah, well, what do you do? Yeah, uh, repost. I am... Expending a superiority die to use my reaction to make a melee attack against the creature. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it missed me. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's how that works. Okay, I'm I'm learning. Yeah, doesn't hit, so it's cool. Still, that's that's, that's you're learning. So yeah, I, 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 listen. Sorry. I, I might not have actually hit with my repost, but I know how but to do tried. it. You tried. <laughs> so yeah, trying. that's what's important. <laughs> so uh, so so he goes to bite you. And you swing at your sword, but it just skitters off of it. And it looks down, its face curling into a sneer. And as it does, you hear behind you just thud, thud, boom. And one step, two step, no battle cry, no nothing. Just a great sword comes down from behind you. Whoosh, and just goes into this creature with... Uh, it's jacked. Okay, uh, first one hits. And second one... Okay, yeah. So these two massive swings as the greatsword cuts into this creature. The oversized weapon leaving gouges these scores in both of his hits. Yes. Uh, is he flatfoot? Uh, yes, yes, he is. He is flatfoot. Reagan says, "Hey!" <laughs> Gives him the finger finger guns. <laughs> Bisexual okay. finger guns. So that <laughs> is. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, that's thirteen and twelve. Wow, he he just took twenty nine points of damage. Holy shit. Jesus, leave some for the rest of us, damn. I can only uh, drink with that much damage. All right, so uh, uh, he he runs forward, leaving, uh, and he leaves these two great gouges in the gargoyle. However, it doesn't look as hurt as it normally would, as if uh, as a regular, like, like as if it has resistance to non-magical weapons. Interesting. Uh, however, uh, uh, Nimian settles in next to you, and he adopts a uh, martial stance. Reagan gives him the old thumbs up. Reagan. You are also up. A. All right, so there's a fucker in front of me, so I'm going to roll to hit him with my long sword, and that is a 22. Does that hit? Uh, that'll hit, yeah. Fantastic. So that is 12. She does 12 damage. All right, and now for your second attack. For her second attack of 16. 16 does hit. Cool. And then she does, that's a nine. And my style is dueling, so I deal plus two damage when wielding a weapon. Okay, add four to what I just did. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff written on this sheet. <laughs> All right, uh, you saw Nimian make these two massive swings, and you step forward and thrust, twisting past the gargoyle's warding hand and gouging deeply into the shoulder. As, then as you pull it out, you duck underneath its other fist, coming in for a hook. Coming up with speed and slicing across its chest as you do. As it lurches back, it, it, it looks kind of confused as to how, like, these two soft meat things uh, <laughs> just, like, just, like dealt a lot of damage to it. So so it pulls back and it's, uh, it's, it's looking a little rough. I mean, that's fair. I mean, he did just get pulverized, so. Yeah. Uh, and after that, uh, it, it, is, uh, it is time for the one 
the only Brickacha. Brickacha. <laughs> Brickacha doubts that she can do much against these gargoyles because they're big and stone. Brickacha should believe in herself, like Reagan believes in her. Oh, that's that's touching. We went Almost through sarcasm. shit. No, it's not. Why do you assume I'm always being mean? Reagan has been nothing if not friendly. I guess. Uh, I guess Brika will attack with her dagger, and uh, and set that dagger on fire. Oh hell yes. <laughs> So, Reagan, behind you, you hear a you hear a word of power as fire leaps along the length of this elegant dagger in Brika's hand. So, uh, Brika, would you make an attack roll? Yes. A twenty. Twenty will hit. So, uh, what I need you to do is roll one d four plus five d six, <laughs> then oh add six God. damage. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna pull up a dice roller. Yeah, I want to do that much damage. <laughs> well, maybe you should have been a rogue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'll pull the dice roller. Uh, yeah, because you have so you have plus five from the dexterity, plus one from the uh, plus one and plus two d six from the enchantment bonus. One d four from the dagger. Uh, but also because there are two hostile creatures that are adjacent to it, that triggers your sneak attack damage, uh, which is another three d six. That's Jesus a lot Christ. of math. Okay, so 19 plus 9. So that's 28. Okay. You dealt 28 points of damage. Thank you. So uh, it's just kind of standing there. And now um, it's not. <laughs> um, and as it, and it, it had these deep gashes uh, in it, but they wouldn't, they didn't seem to be slowing it down. The weapons don't seem to be doing as much as they normally would when suddenly uh, diminutive form leaps forward, driving the dagger into the belly and sliding it up, opening it. The guard looks down in surprise for a moment as it sees the stone around the wound bubbling and falling to the ground. And this, and this demure little kobold <laughs> looking up. Four foot two. <laughs> and it falls down dead. Yay! <laughs> Rika looks delighted. Like I didn't, I didn't know I could do that, guys. And Reagan <laughs> fell in love instantly. <laughs> instantly, she hits good. <laughs> I like, I like the idea that like this is the first time Brika has ever used a knife. <laughs> and no. she's like, oh no, 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 just... just like against, against like a rock. <laughs> yeah, like against not a not just some not jerk in an like alley or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah exactly. <laughs> not just some schmuck. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it has plus 1d6 to schmucks too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, that is that is not that is not true. I cannot commit to that. I cannot commit to that. Yeah, there's, there's too be many schmucks to, in yeah. this campaign. <laughs> yeah, there, there listen, listen. It's a this, sh- it's a city of schmucks. <laughs> This and Brinkachaw is Shitty. Shitty. the only one with a knife that can kill them all. In a shitty, in a shitty like this, you never know when you go right into another schmuck right around the alley. That's why you need to have a picture, someone who can take care of things. That's why you go to Brinkacha. Brinkacha. Private uh, eyes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> just bring, okay, just, anyway. just, 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 just. We don't have the Wawa coat. guitar. We need a Wawa guitar for like the seventies detective theme. Oh no, no, yeah. no, 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 no! That was like that was like nineteen forties, like you know. No, you like, were nineteen forties, and then Diana I was going for Loop on the Third. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Loop on the Third. Yeah. Break the <laughs> Um, anyway, anyway, uh, so there's some gargoyle. So, so, it, so it's now Monty's turn. Is there anything left for me to do? Like, is the other one still alive? Yeah, no, it just dar- dropped dead when it saw Brinkus. <laughs> Holy <laughs> oh, shit! Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so the other one is still alive, and it is further back, but it is still around. Uh, okay, I am gonna launch a firebolt at it. All right. Um, so I get 2d10 because I'm level 5 now. Uh, if you hit. If you, you have to hit first. Oh, I have to make sure it hits first, duh. So, 15 plus 8 to hit. So that's a 23. And 13. Okay. Uh, so as the first gargoyle falls... 
a streak of fire rockets out from behind y'all, and it just craters Fuck into yeah. the gargoyle. You can see pieces of it beginning to fall down as it steps up, and it just sort of... <sighs> as it locks eyes with the group of you. At this point, it's going to run forward, and it's going to make one swing at uh, you, Reagan, which... It does not hit. <laughs> uh, he is going to go at Flatfoot, who... Uh, okay, he's gonna go to bite five foot, but he just just drifts back out of the way. Nice. Uh, and as it does, it stumbles forward. Cool. Um, so Reagan's gonna hit him, and she's not gonna hit him very hard. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirteen. Uh, yeah. So you bring your sword down, and it just bats it away with its arm. Oh, no. Aw. Well, I'll do my second attack, and that one is a. 17? Uh, that does hit. Yeah, 17 hits. Okay. So, nine damage. Okay. So, uh, it bats away the first one, and you pull back and then just drive your sword forward, slicing out a piece of its chest. Hey, take that. That'll show you to dodge. <laughs> oh, wait, did uh, I just skip Nimian's turn? I'm a dick. I skipped Nimian. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, actually, that happened. That happened. Uh, <laughs> <I'm rude. laughs> um, Sorry, Nimi. Oh, no worries, no worries. I didn't, I didn't catch oh, that. Oh, Reagan's it. nothing but friendly, she says. She is nothing but friendly. She's just <laughs> very eager to fight things. <laughs> yeah, she's very nice. <laughs> also, like, Sometimes. also, like, Reagan being eager to protect her newfound companion. Yeah. Oh, I don't that's know. That's totally what it was. <laughs> I didn't just forget he existed. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. We all forget about Nimian sometimes. He's, he's, just, he's very quiet. He's I very swear quiet. to you right now, I will never forget Nimian again. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. I don't believe uh, that for a second. <laughs> uh, so, um, Nimian, we're going to do Nimian's turn now because we forgot. <laughs> Nimian steps forward and he just whoosh, whoosh, uh, two more swings and... The first one hits. The second one, second one, the gargoyle uh, manages to block. However, the first one. Sorry, hits. wait. Did you just call them gargoyles? I did. Okay, gargoyles, not gargoyles, gargoyles. Gargoyles. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay. I like gargoyles. They, they are no. They, okay, they are guarding. <laughs> I will say that. Mm-hmm. But and I don't. Uh, well, no, no. Okay, okay. I don't. I don't appreciate being attacked here, like <laughs> in this game that I'm running for you all out of the goodness of my heart. <laughs> out of the goodness so, of his own heart. Um, mm-hmm. uh, okay, so he just sort of steps back uh, into his uh, into his stance. Nimian does, uh, and then uh, b- uh, Brickacha, you're up. Brickacha. <laughs> It's, it's not her battle cry. Um, she's not a Pokemon. It's just me. She's not a Pokemon. Um, is my dagger still on fire? Uh, it stays on fire until you choose to put it out. Oh, yes, I love that. All right, I shall... End this. <laughs> Finish <laughs> him. I shall stab at the other gargoyle. Oh, I stab at thee. I stab at thee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, uh-huh. roll with advantage, because yes. uh-huh. you are kobold, and you are within five feet of your friends. Pack tactics! So, pack tactics, ten. Pack tactics. Plus eight. Plus oh. eight to oh, hit. Oh, plus eight to okay. hit. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so 18 does hit, yeah. Woo! So, uh, roll again, 5d6 plus 1d4 plus 6. Yeah, no, I still have the window uh, up. No, don't don't even. Roll. All right, that's a 28. <laughs> okay. Um, Jesus Christ, freak up. Uh, so you strike down, and uh, once again, it leaves this bubbling trail behind in the wake of the burning steel. It, the stone flesh of the gargoyle just turns molten. It looks down at you, snarling. However, it is still up, and it is Monty's turn. It's still standing? It's like barely standing. Just All right, then Monty's signature firebolt is coming up next. But first, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> this D&D oh, game is wow. brought to you by... Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, <laughs> math. Math. 18 plus 8? 26. Uh, yep, yeah, 26 will hit. Yeah. <laughs> that hits Tiamat. Mm. <laughs> it does. Tiamat's AC is 25. When, when will you really? let us fight Tiamat? <laughs> and Please don't. Funny. Well, thankfully there's no Tiamat here. Uh, <laughs> so. Boring. Well, that wasn't very good. Um, 8. Eight damage. Not bad for what is that? A cantrip? Okay. It is a cantrip, so, yeah. uh, so seeing the gouge in its chest, uh, you sort of track your finger down, close one eye, line up the shot, and just 
This bolt of fire shoots forward, and it just craters right into the chest. Uh, As the bolt sort of burrows in, you can see at its mouth magma kind of bubbling up from it. It begins to crack as more and more fire begins to spread throughout it. And the gargoyle, it just kind of, it just tries to reach out, and then it shoots, and it just falls to the ground in this pile of molten rubble. The encounter is over. Hey! And it's all thanks to Brika Cha. <laughs> Brika Cha! <laughs> Damn, Brika. Who oh, knew? Well, so, uh, I mean, she dealt, like, I think it was... She dealt 56, 56 damage, I think. Damage. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You, so you are you level realize, five. I don't, I don't math, so I forget these that's, things. That's what we're here for, to remind, to, yeah. to remind you of Rika and how, like, oh... We're Rika. spreading her gospel, Rika's the good news. Like, oh, yeah, I hit once in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Andrew, what do we see? Take me back into the fantasy. The Take fantasy. me a word picture. <laughs> you all see ahead of you, uh, uh, they, they they were guarding a doorway. It's a small Not little anymore. hallway, which, well, okay, well, it's a, <laughs> it's a small little hallway which goes forward, uh, then it curves to the left. Let me just, uh, let me just pull the floor plan for this mansion. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. No, it uh, curves to the right, actually. Well, fucking shit. My mental picture's ruined. <laughs> Start over. Campaign's over. I'm I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, you, th- you wake up in three cells. And uh, <laughs> Minion, Minion's right there. He's a drunk. Uh, Reset my cell. Oh, I forgot to save the... Ble- oh, uh-oh. son of a bitch. Yeah. Quick look. Uh-oh. Oh, oh shit. Let's, let's, let's oh, see. Let's see. These old the games, they're so janky. You know? <laughs> anyway, so there's a passageway, and it curves some way. Uh, yes, uh, th- th- there's, there's the way you guys came from behind you, and then there's the hall up ahead that curves to the right. Okay. Hey, hey Brika, check, check it out. Uh, okay. <laughs> listen, listen, after that ex- display of absolute power, we're <laughs> going to send you first everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Brika, <laughs> you just get to do everything now. Every social interaction, every everything. <laughs> yes. Start, yes. Do very magic. small kobold in a scarf with a flaming dagger. She is beautiful. <laughs> and she's ready for this responsibility. I believe in her. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, to be fair, so far, at, at this point, it's worked out pretty well, you know? So, uh, mm-hmm. really, you know, I mean, think about it. Like, Brika, Brika got the money, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Brika, Brika broke everyone out of jail. Brika got the money. Brika's yeah, she, Brika's done yeah. literally everything. <laughs> yeah, so she's... We were completely lost without her. She, 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 she killed the gargoyles. Like, Brika's, you know, she's... Uh, she's... <laughs> yeah, she is batting a thousand. You go first. <laughs> we fucked if we were by ourselves. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. What am I investigating or uh, doing? I mean, just doing? like, just stealth and peek your head around the corner. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I will stealth around the corner then, and I got... Uh, six plus eleven is seventeen. Okay, so yeah, uh, you um, you're pretty stealthy. Uh, not like as stealthy as earlier, but you're still pretty stealthy. Uh, and you see ahead of you there is a small opening which you could definitely fit through, but it looks like there is a large round object ahead, sort of obscuring the way. Uh, not like fully blocking it. Uh, you could probably have someone stronger move it, but it hmm. seems it seems more like for obscuring purposes than fully blocking it rather uh, mm. rather than like a full-on sliding secret door this is just moving something in the way so people don't see it when they walk in a room it's a modesty stone oh so the house is naked behind there <laughs> i mean technically you'd all be in the naked part now Ooh. Uh, we've been naked this whole time <laughs> don't that's, like that that. Was, that was the twist <laughs> Every, everybody's naked Except for Flatfoot, he he just look he just looks really awkward because he put on armor and he's just like, oh, we were doing yeah, no, we were doing the no, naked job today. Flatfoot, you're making us look like assholes. Take your clothes off. <laughs> and and, 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 and uh, yeah, he just oh, I can I can do that, and um, that's that's it. Everybody's everybody's naked now. Oh, <laughs> this is the world that we is made. Not what I wanted to happen. Uh, Monty never nude Pensmith over here. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> okay, so uh, Brika reports back to everyone else about the uh, the modesty cover. I think I heard something about someone strong being able to move it in that exposition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I could it be moved, eh? Reagan flexes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. 
Yeah, and if uh, Reagan doesn't succeed, I might be able to help with some magic, but I think Gaston's probably got it handled over here. <laughs> and and uh, Flyfoot here is also pretty tough. Yeah, he could certainly take a hit. God. That is one of my... Pretty much most of my good points, to be honest. Okay, that self-esteem problem aside, we'll Regan is that. going to stealth around the corner. Uh, she doesn't actually have to stealth. There's there's nobody there right now. Well, she's going to try anyway, and she got an eight, so respect <laughs> that. Okay, uh, well, that's, that's canon now. So, Brika, you see Regan <laughs> trying to mimic basically how you've been walking without the... Uh, <laughs> Not the best success at replicating it. She's, well, she doesn't have of, backwards cobalt yeah, blade, yeah, so it's hard. Yes, yeah, yeah, so she's kind of like on her tiptoes, trying to like, trying to like, like mimic it and just clank, clank, clank. Break us her new idols. Uh, but you know, I want to uh, be like you when I grow up. You know, her 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 heart's in the right place. And Reagan, yeah. as you turn the corner, you're faced with sort of a this sort of cylinder. You can you can only see uh, one side of it, but you can tell there's more depth there. Okay, so. Reagan moves it. Yeah, roll me athletics. Uh, yeah, I definitely heard that as roll me a flex roll. Yeah, a flex roll. <laughs> Hell yeah, flex roll. I got an 18 to flex. Okay, uh, so you push it forward, and just after just a couple of seconds, you manage to move it far enough. Yeah, I've been really hitting the pro after I do my morning <laughs> oh my uh, <laughs> workouts. <laughs> okay, so uh, Reagan, you look in, and you see uh, this is the cellar, and the cellar has... Uh, there's a lot of wine in the cellar. I was expecting bees, but I mean, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no, there are barrels of wine. There are bottles of wine. It is, it is just wine, wine, wine. Um, the actual wine room mom. is, yeah. <laughs> the actual room is around uh, fifteen by thirty-five feet of just wine, just the, the whole fucking thing. Hey, Flatfoot. Yeah. I found booze. That's um, that's lovely. I don't, I don't think now is the time for a drink. Oh, you're not one of those types of alcoholics. I mean, so I guess let's go it. What are we trying to steal again? That is the one thing <laughs> I didn't write down. Uh, it's uh, it is a ceremonial. The scroll. only thing. Yeah, no, that, the it's only a cer- thing. Y- yeah, but it's it's the ceremonial scroll. So, you're so it's probably for. not in the wine cellar. Uh, from what she said, it's probably in the vaults. Might the vault be in the wine cellar? Uh, from what you know, the vaults are on the second floor, actually. Oh, I know a lot about this mansion, apparently. I mean, she like she mentioned it to you. She gave you pretty clear instructions. Which I definitely wrote down. Mm-hmm. Reagan heads into the cellar. Uh, okay, as you, as you walk in, Reagan, among all the wine, you notice there are three doors. Uh, well, okay, so two doors and like a stairway up to another door. On the left and right, there are... More wine cellars. There oh must be God. like five wine cellars under. They are wealthy nobles. Very well. Who the hell needs five wine cellars? They like a lot of wine. <laughs> Monty is just like aggressively eye rolling. Like, oh my God, you spent all this money on wine and you could have bought books. Man, you don't know they didn't also I, buy books. Anyway, Reagan's I really, gonna... <laughs> sometimes I forget how much of a, how, how fun Monty is at parties. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Reagan is gonna look for an incom- in, an inconspicuous shelf, like one they don't go to very often. That's not like right in the view. If you come down here, and she's gonna take a bottle. Mm-hmm. And it's just her, it's hers now. It's in the bag. <laughs> Revenge complete. <laughs> yeah. You never know yeah. when you might need it. Yeah. Plus, I mean, hey, Nimi might want it later. Who knows? Who's to say? He's, um, he's being responsible right now, but you know. Anyway. But yes, uh, directly ahead of you is a staircase up. All right, up sounds good. She is going that way. Up quietly. Hey, I got a 15 this time. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, you go up first, uh, and you see that there is a small door ahead of you. It's been left ajar. Uh, you move forward relatively quietly. You push it open with a small creak, and you see a mostly deserted large kitchen. There are numerous ovens, prep tables, everything a noble family needs to entertain However, you do see in one corner, the right-hand corner furthest away from you, there is a man wearing armor who appears to be canoodling with a woman in a maid's outfit. Canoodling? Uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, just enjoying each other's company. You know, you know, like, nothing, like, too perverse, but, you know, sort of, like, uh, sort of just the dreamy eyes of, uh... Yeah, that's uh, nice. Uh, exits are... (laughs) 
I mean, no, it's fine. You don't need I'm, to hear. I'm about, happy like, for them. Where are the gross. exits? It's gross. a very long room. Okay, where where <laughs> where where, where you're looking? Where you're looking? Uh, there are three other walls. There's a door ahead of you, uh, which is maybe thirty feet ahead. Uh, there are two doors that look like they're staircases going down again. Uh, okay. Uh, to the left and the right, those also look to be about 30, 40 feet away. And how far are we from the canoodlers? The canoodlers are in a far corner. They seem uh, very, very focused on each other. <laughs> so, like, with a 15, can I just keep walking? Uh, yeah. Fantastic. So she's going to turn around and stage whisper to her friends, Be quiet! There's people canoodling! And then she just walks. <laughs> Um, I rolled a 16, so... Okay, yeah, uh, you follow Monty, you know, you know, keeping quiet, uh, and you also see the two canoodlers. They do not see you, they are entranced in each other's eyes. Red to the tips of his ears, Monty continues to follow Reagan. Briga? Hmm. That's a 16 plus 11, so Briga <laughs> teleports across the room. <laughs> <laughs> melts into the shadows without even a whisper of her tail. <laughs> okay, how does Nimian do with this advantage on oh, that? Oh, well, um, I mean, well, Nimian's dead to us. <laughs> uh, so Nimian steps forward. He gets halfway to the door, uh, uh, and then he knocks over a bowl. It just falls the. <laughs> he stands there. Motionless. Reagan motions for him to just keep walking. Come on! <laughs> the canoodlers are looking directly at him, and you he, you hear a, uh, a hey hey wh- wh- who who who, go, who goes there? No need for trouble, soldier. I'm one of Archduke von Teppel's guests. I've been invited here so that I may investigate the defenses, and it seems as though someone is not at their post right now. Ooh. Madam, not that I can blame him, you being such a beauty yourself, but really? <laughs> uh, now, you're, you're representing your lord, wearing his seal on your armor. Uh, I will be speaking to the lady of the house about this. Uh, no, no, wait, wait, no, please, I, um, we, we were just, we were just, tell you what, it'll take five minutes, finish up whatever it is you want to finish up. Whatever, confessions of love. Um, <laughs> and then get back to your fucking post. Agreed. I, uh, yes. Excellent. And he turns and walks back towards you. And as soon as he breaks the islands of where they were, he immediately goes from this confident man to just... <sighs> 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 yeah, Reagan gives him a thumbs up. That was fucking incredible. <sighs> Ballsy play, we, dude. We, I am impressed. We need, we need to go now. That's fair. Yeah, right. Okay, we go, we go. Moving right along. It seems as Moving though he right has a plus nine to deception. Wow. Damn. Um, so you guys head forward and you come to a door. And you see a small room about 15 feet. Uh, 15, squ- 15, like, by 15 feet. And do you see uh, what seem to be various spots, uh, small, very small tables that have silverware, glasses, essentially a servant station, uh, between the kitchen and the actual dining hall. Okay. There is actually no one in here. Uh, ahead of you, there uh, there is a smaller passageway, probably a servant's passage to your left and to your right. And forward, you see two doors. Looks like one for ingress, one for egress, uh, which enters into, from what you can tell, uh, there is a great dining hall stretching uh, long in either direction. And we're on the first floor, because we came up from the basement. Yes, you are currently on the first floor. Uh, from here, you can see there are staircases up the hall. Okay, and there are... Are there other closed doors in here, or just the ones that go into the dining hall? Uh, th- so those are actually uh, currently open. But then there are two on the left and right that serve as passageways to the servants' quarters. The, the places that the help... That, that, like, the help move without disturbing the guests, you know? Okay, yeah. I mean, my logic... And I guess Reagan's logic is that servants usually have their own staircase. Exactly. They have their own access. So Reagan's going to kind of like peek her head into what looks like the servants' quarters for like a servants a service staircase. So uh, looking to the left and right, uh, the, the hallways go down. It looks like there are more doors around, maybe, uh, maybe 100 feet down in either direction. So do you go left or right? Mm, I mean, what do you guys think? Um... Brika, you feeling left or right? Guide us. Uh, eh, eh. <laughs> uh, 
I don't. Uh, I mean, is there any I, indication as to what might be a more favorable direction? Uh, does left are these running parallel to or perpendicular to the dining hall? Oh uh, yes, they they are both running parallel to the dining hall. Okay, so like neither one's gonna go further from it. No, you you get the impression that if you were to be walking, uh, if you kept walking straight down, you'd be outside. Part of the part of the reason that they have these areas is so that they can have uh, some further insulation in the colder months, whereas uh, well, yeah, ser- servants can be cold, you know. <laughs> yes, re- really stick it to poor people. Uh, all right, so Reagan thinks, fuck it, and just goes left. Okay, fuck uh, it. Okay, yeah, you go left. Fair enough. I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming that you all follow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you guys walk for a bit. You reach a door on the right that op- that clearly opens into the dining hall, uh, sort of uh, sort of at one of the extreme ends of it. The path goes forward, and in about thirty feet, it uh, it- it's going to turn right, perpendicular to where you're walking now. At the end is another door into the feast hall. Okay, Reagan turns around and checks the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, pretty much the same setup. Yep. Okay. So Regan just keeps going down the hall. He said turns, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It turns directly to the right. All right. I guess Regan does that. Okay. Uh, you you walk forward, and you see the other set of doors to the hall, as well as an alcove that leads out into, uh, into what you assume is the main house. The servants' quarters doors, uh, they op- a door opens into... Uh, uh, so so you, you, you see now where everyone is. You see the grand ballroom of the Von Tepler estate. It is massive. Marble floors, a dance area in the middle, and around it, in sort of a semicircle, various tables have been brought in. They're all of rich wood, very clearly made by artisans, and there are dozens of servants who are currently preparing the hall. Even though, as Anastasia mentioned to you, the actual ball isn't for a week and a half. There's one thing you've all learned in Hintilla, that the balls, the masquerade, the game of masks and martyrs, which is which is played by almost every single noble in the city, is the most important game. So even now, a week and a half before the fact, people are moving around with not just a practice grace, but a ruthless efficiency preparing. And as you look through, you see further up, this ballroom actually goes around uh, around like 80 feet into the air, topped with this beautiful glass dome. And as you look up, you see that the sun has set and there are stars twinkling, the moon half full. Ringing the interior, ringing the exterior of the hall are three additional floors. There are balconies and alcoves and walkways, some of which, which look to be more private, places where someone could abscond with another to discuss personal matters or dangerous liaisons. Mm-hmm. And then there are spaces that are very clearly visible to the downstairs so that everyone can know just who it is you want to be seen with at the party. This is where everyone seems to be right now, and it is insanely busy. 